Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. I'm your host, Tanera Garvin. Thank you so much for joining us this Thursday evening. I want to let you know Karis Daily Live Bible Study is daily. So you can join us every Monday and Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time. You can join us Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Mountain Time and Wednesdays at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. The live Bible study is also live, so we want to invite you to interact with us. And the way you can do that is whatever platform you're watching us on tonight, I want to encourage you, take a minute during this teaching that while you hear something that blesses you or you have a question about it, put your questions, your comments in that section below uh, what you're watching us on. And we want to take some time at the end of today's message to answer your questions. So we encourage you to do that. I also want to let you know that if you've been blessed by this ministry or you have a heart to partner with it, we want to encourage you, you can do that at awmi.net slash give. Um, I also want to let you know we have a 24 hour a day, seven day a week prayer ministry. So we've got prayer ministers standing by to pray with you as you're hearing this message and you say, man, I want someone to pray in agreement with me. You can call our prayer line at 719-635-111. One, one. Well, I'm excited to introduce to you today our guest speaker. She works with Andrew Womack Ministries in Hong Kong as our director, um, doing an amazing job with the ministry there, as well as with Karis Bible College in Hong Kong. And so please welcome with me, Miss Cindy Pearson. Thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you, Tanera. It's awesome to be here. It's great to be in the if live in studio. I know. So this is a rare opportunity for me, but it's yes, great it's to be so here fun. With you. Normally, if you remember, Cindy joins us from Hong Kong on Zoom, but we've had the pleasure of her being here. We've kept her busy in meetings all week long, uh, but we're just so excited for the future where God's taking the ministry and taking Cindy in this area. And yeah. so we're excited to have you here live with us. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, tonight, I just really want to share some things that are on my heart with you. I just want to share some things that God has been doing in my life lately and just hope that I can be an encouragement to you. First, an exciting thing, and that is that we are opening up Andrew Womack Ministries Singapore. And this is going to be so awesome. Karis Bible College Singapore, it is going to be so big. And we know that those of you who are in Singapore are so excited about what God's going to do and the opportunities there. And I want to just say that, you know, sometimes things like this are a journey. <laughs> and it's a process and it takes us through this journey. And that's what I've been walking through lately is this journey. I actually, I had expectations when this was going to happen, what the timeline was going to be. I know this is God. I know we heard God on it, but I've had expectations. And I thought by now I would have my visa and actually I would be living in Singapore. But here I am and I love Woodland Park, so it's great to be here. And what I realized is through this time of um, my expectations, my timeline, that there's been opportunity for disappointment because things haven't worked out the way I thought they would. And the timeline hasn't happened the way that I thought the timeline would. And so there's been this real dis opportunity for disappointment of God, what are you doing? And you know, I moved, I left Hong Kong. I'm still over AWM Hong Kong, and so I'll still be back there. I love the students and the people there, but I, I moved, I, I sold everything, brought three suitcases home so that I can just move to Singapore. And so I'm in this time of transition and I'm like, um, God, what are you doing? What's happening? This is my future, what's going on? And what I really realized, Tanera, yeah is that there is such an opportunity to start complaining. Mm -hmm. There's opportunity right. to start saying, God, maybe I got it wrong, you got it wrong, you know, to just be in that kind of that complaining mode. I understand. And when we get in that mode, it's really hard to get out of it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and so all of a sudden I started thinking, Lord, I am not gonna look at my circumstances because when we look at our circumstances, Peter sunk. Yeah. It started to sink. That's right. When you look at the waves coming around you. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I love it because Andrew says the, wa the waves and the wind mm -hmm. were always there. Right. But that's not what Peter was focusing on. He wasn't focusing on the waves and the wind. He was focusing on Jesus. So 
That's what God said to me. He told me two things. And he said, fix your eyes on me. Mm -hmm. And you know, that sounds so simple, but when we get in the middle of that opportunity mm -hmm. to feel disappointed, to feel offended, to feel um, hopeless, you know, when we get in that opportunity, we really only have one choice that's gonna take us through. Right. And that's fixing our eyes on him. Amen. And that's what he said to me. The second thing he said to me is he said, Cindy, I have good plans for your life. Good plans for your life. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I took that to heart. No matter where I go or what I do, my daddy has good plans for me. And because he has such good plans for me, I can rest. And immediately I had a peace. And I've had that peace. Sometimes those thoughts come back to me. <laughs> but I've had that peace the whole time. I've waited and waited and waited. Just not because there's anything wrong, but just because we're waiting for everything to be put in place. But I've had that peace because of those two words. And so what I want to do is I want to share with you a little, about, a little bit about kind of this process and some things I've learned. You know, the other thing is that um, the Lord is helping me walk in patience. And a lot of people think, oh, patience. But patience is just long lasting faith, right? If God said it and I trust him, then I just keep standing in faith. That's all patience is. It's not really a difficult thing to walk through. So in walking through that patience, yeah. I can actually see um, the faith rise up. Man, I am excited. Tanera, you know, you've yes. been with me in meetings. <laughs> I am so excited. I'm Amen. so excited to put my feet on the ground. I leave on Monday oh, for Singapore. So As a tourist, that's fine. But I leave on Monday because I'm so excited because I have peace yeah. and I have that faith, right? Amen. That faith to just trust him, that patience. Mm -hmm. So this is what I wanna share with you today. Just a little bit about kind of what I've walked through and some of the things I've learned. You know, the first thing he led me to the verse was Matthew 6, 33. We all know this verse, but let's read it together again, just to remind ourselves what this verse says. Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, mm -hmm. and all these things shall be added to you. Now we know this verse, but God really revealed to me from my understanding some deeper things about this verse. And that's really what I want to share with you today. I used to think before I really got this grace message, I used to think that meant every morning I have quiet time with him and that's a good thing. And then every day when I have a problem or a situation, I go to him first. Those are really good things. But I didn't understand, and all these things shall be added unto you. If I, if I go to him in the morning, and I go to him with my problems, then he'll bless me? That's what I thought it meant. And so I think I was very much, it's a very works-oriented type of a mentality that I saw this verse through. And I knew once I understood grace that it was different, but recently I've even gotten more revelation on it. So let, let me share that with you. You know, the thing is, is that during this time, Jesus was talking to his disciples and his followers. We're talking about Matthew 5, 6, in that 7, in that area. He's talking to his disciples and his followers. But they were still under the law, right? They were under the old covenant. So they didn't have the mentality that we have when we look at this verse. Mm -hmm. And so as he's explaining all these things, he was introducing them to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So before... Matthew 6, 33, it's talking about this is the kingdom. And he starts talking about the Father. In the Old Testament, it talks about the Father, but it's the role mm -hmm. of God the Father. Now he's talking about the relationship mm -hmm. that we have with the Father. Mm -hmm. The relationship of a father, daughter, a father, son, and how, how beautiful and intimate that relationship is. Jesus was sowing seeds into them to say, the kingdom is about relationship. Amen. It's about the Father. Then he goes on to talk about the Holy Spirit. Again, we know in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come down on the prophets, right? And rest on them and they would prophesy and do things under the power of the Holy Spirit. But he couldn't stay there. Mm. 
There was no resting place for the Holy Spirit in man in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But now he's talking about the Holy Spirit and the resting place is in us. Amen. When we become a believer, the Holy Spirit enters in, right? He becomes, our spirit becomes one with him and we are filled wall to wall, Andrew says, with the Holy Ghost. And now there's that relationship with the Holy Spirit. What a beautiful thing. Can you imagine, can you imagine how they were listening to it? It must have just blown their mind. Right? Like what? The Holy Spirit like that? The Father as our Father? I mean, it must right? have just so blown their minds that they maybe even thought that he was being a little bit, you know, like a, a heretic or something because blasphemous but he was planting seeds so they would understand mm. what the kingdom was about. Mm. And lastly, he was talking about the heart. In the Old Testament, everything was about actions. It was about you sinned, then you have to go and you know do a sacrifice, have a sacrifice made for you. It was all about action. But now he's talking about the heart. What is your motive? What's the heart behind your actions? Mm. He even said, he said, you know, um, you, some kill, he said, but it's not about murder. Don't even be angry, right? It's not about committing adultery. Don't even lust. He talked about money and the love of money and the attitude you have with money. There were so many things. Then he starts talking about the heart. Why? Because he was introducing the kingdom yeah. and the kingdom is all about heart relationship with him. Mm. So I just thought, wow, God, you're so good. Because it, what it did for me was it reinforces that it's all about relationship and relationship with him and that intimate, deep relationship that we can have with him, which is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So he introduced to them the kingdom, understanding who he really is, that personal relationship. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, we know his righteousness is Jesus, right? But what does it say in 2 Corinthians 5, 21? What an awesome verse. It says, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Wow, that is amazing. You know, pe some people call that the great exchange. Mm. Uh, we got the better end of the deal. Amen, <laughs> amen. You know, so, but that's what happened for us. Because of his work on the cross, we're made righteous. And therefore, we're in right standing with him. Can you imagine? We are unconditionally acceptable to our Father. That just blows my mind. <laughs> that is his righteousness. That, and when we understand that, guess what? We can start to understand our identity. Because I stand before him completely right, completely whole, completely um, able to have that relationship with him. There's nothing that bars that relationship that I have with him. So that's exciting to me. That is my identity. So as I talk about this, the first main point, you know, really why do we seek him? We seek him to know the kingdom. We seek him to know who he is and his righteousness. So we can have this relationship with him, but then also we can know who we really are. That changes the whole, it just changes the whole way I look at that verse. Mm -hmm. It just changes the whole thing. It does. Because it, 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 it makes it all about relationship. Yeah. And I just love that. So the second main point then is when we understand who we are in him, that's the position Amen. that we seek him from. Right. We seek him from that position of, I already know who I am. I'm a child of, I'm his child. I'm his daughter. Yeah. He's given me everything I need for life and godliness. Amen. That's how I seek him. That's amazing. That's totally amazing to me. So, um, so I just think it's so awesome that when we seek him that way, yeah. then we know, we know the position that we have in Christ, that the position we seek him from, then we know what's already ours. You see, it says in all these things will be added unto you. Guess what? Through the cross, 
they already are ours. They are already ours. We don't have to seek him so we get it, but we just seek him so we know what's ours, so we can walk in it. Isn't that beautiful? We don't have to seek him to get anything. That's right. He's already given it to us. We seek him to understand what's ours so we can walk in it. So that's really our identity. And I just believe that when we seek him out of relationship, we seek to identify with him. We seek that position of being a child and what he's given us. Man, we're going to live victoriously. Yes. That is victorious living. So I want to just pause for a minute and I want to remind you of who you are. Because sometimes we forget mm -hmm. in the busyness of the day, in the waiting and the potential disappointment, in the offense that comes our way, right. we forget who we are in Him. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to take a moment, shut your eyes if you want to shut your eyes, and I'm going to read the word over you. And I, as I read it, I want you to just agree with me and say, yes, this is who I am. So take this in because this is who you are. We are sons and daughters of the King Amen. and heirs with Christ. We carry the King of glory. We are the bearers of good news and ministers of reconciliation. We are the righteousness of God in Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are created for good works. Amen. We have favor with God. We have favor with man. We're chosen by God to be holy and blameless in his presence and appointed to go and bear fruit that lasts. Mm -hmm. We're blessed coming in and we are blessed going out. Everything, everything we put our hand to prospers. We're blessed with every spiritual blessing and he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We are full of the Holy Spirit with more than enough power in us Amen. to heal the sick and raise the dead. Amen. 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 I hope that encourages you because every time I read those, it's just like, yes, God, yeah. that is who I am. And the more we know that, the deeper that relationship goes, the deeper revelation we have. So that is who you are because of Jesus. So, you know, when the Lord said to me, fix your eyes on me, mm -hmm. out of relationship, I heard his voice and I said, okay, Lord. There was an immediate, okay, Lord, because out of relationship, I know that he has the best for me. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, magnifying glass. Yes. Right. One side, big, it magnifies, <laughs> right. right? So. If yeah. you put a magnifying glass on a situation mm -hmm. or anything like that, it gets bigger. Right. And if you focus on those circumstances, they're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. God, God only gets smaller in the circumstance, right? But what happens when you turn that magnifying glass around? When you turn it around and you focus on him, he gets bigger That's and right. bigger and bigger. And when he gets bigger, it doesn't mean your circumstance is going to go away. But what it does mean, it's going to shrink in the complexity or, or the, your mind thinking mm -hmm, mm -hmm. compared to God. Amen. So we have to think, where is your magnifying glass right now? Is it on your circumstances? Or have you fixed your eyes on him and your magnifying glass is on him? Amen. You know, I was uh, ministering to a lady um, in Hong Kong recently, and she had gone through a really tough time and through all the COVID and everything, and she had these incredible fears. Mm -hmm. And with those fears, she was not even able to leave her house, sometimes not even able to get up, and they put her on lots of drugs, and it wasn't really working. And you know, the one thing I said to her is I said, where's your magnifying glass? Mm -hmm. Because if your magnifying glass is fixed on your fears and what's happening with you, then God's going to seem really small. Mm -hmm. And I said, if you can just turn it around mm -hmm. and focus on him and be thankful yeah. and the good things he's given you, your situation is going to feel smaller and smaller and Amen. smaller. 
So we have to know where we fix our, where we fix our eyes, despite the wind and the waves. Amen. It doesn't mean the wind and waves are gone, but where are your eyes fixed? Where's your magnifying glass? Amen. And the key is that we choose. Yeah. We choose where we fix our eyes. God said, Cindy, fix your eyes on me. Amen. And I knew I really didn't have any other choice. I wanted to choose to fix them on him because I didn't want to go through all the emotion of fixing them on my circumstances. Right. So we choose. So choose where you fix your eyes. The second thing he said was, no matter what, I have good plans for you. I know we all know this verse, but let's just read it again. Jeremiah 29, 11 in the NIV version says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. And also let's read the new King James version. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. He has plans. He declares plans over us to prosper. I declare over you God's promise that he has plans to prosper you. He thinks good of you. Amen. He has a future for you. He has hope for you. If you're feeling hopeless today or you don't think you have a future, go back to this verse and just read it out loud and say, thank you, Lord. This is what you have for me today. If you're feeling disappointed right here, he has plans for you. He has good plans for you. He's a good daddy. He is a really good daddy. Amen. So we can trust him. And when he said that to me, I knew I could trust my dad that he has good plans for me. You know, I think it's so fun because when we trust him, then we, we, we know his nature. We get to know more of who he is because that's who he is. He's a trustworthy God, right? But let's look at Psalms 125 verse one. It says, they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abides forever. Psalms 125 verse one, when we trust in him, we trust in him, we are unmovable. We cannot be moved. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Not only unmovable, unshakable. We have so much strength. And you know, I always think of this, when I trust him, I'm putting a stake in the ground. Mm -hmm. And I am saying, this is my position in him. And I am not going to be Amen. removed. I'm not gonna be moved. I'm not gonna be shaken. You know, it's funny, I, I had, um, I, you know, again, I'm going through this, so it's a journey. So sometimes there's thoughts that come in that make me go, ah, what's happening, right? Isn't that true? But I had this vision, um, this picture, I should say. And the picture was mm -hmm. that um, I had put a stake. I, I, was, I was, you know, getting those thoughts and I thought, I'm holding on to you, God. And I put a stake in the ground. And then that stake turned into, you know, in the playground, they have the stake with the little kind of um, wheel and it kind of goes around oh, really fast. Yeah. You know, in the playground, they have that. So I was doing this. So I put the stake in the ground and then it turned into that. And I was holding on for dear life as I'm going <laughs> spinning around, you know. And God said, let go. Let go with one hand. And I went, oh, do you trust me? Yeah. Do you trust me? I trust wow. you, Lord. So I let go with one hand and I was kind of like this, you know, and it was like, wow, this is really fun. I had a scarf on and it was kind of going like this. <laughs> this is really fun. So I let go with one foot and I had one arm out and one foot out and I was just going around this thing really fast, but laughing oh. and having so much fun. Wow, what a change. Isn't that what God wants for us? Mm -hmm. He wants us to be in this place mm -hmm. where we're so willing to trust him Amen. that that stake goes in the ground and we hold on, but then we can just relax yeah. and enjoy what he's doing during this time. Amen. And so it was such a vivid picture to me and it just, it just even now it makes me laugh. <laughs> I just think, oh, that's so cool. And he gave that to me because that's really the freedom that we have in him Amen. when we trust him. Yes. So if we can't trust him, mm -hmm. it's probably because we don't know him well mm -hmm. enough yet.
It's because we don't have that deep relationship. We need to just be in the Word. Get in the Word and find out who your good daddy is and Amen. all the promises that he has for you. Because when we have this relationship with him, we can trust him. Amen. When we have the relationship and, and if you're, there's no condemnation. If right now you're saying, well, I don't know if I have this relationship with him. It's okay. Mm. Just talk to him. Say, I want that kind of relationship with you. I want a relationship that's deep. Yes, I amen. want a relationship that's so full of trust that when I put that stake in the ground, I won't be moved. Amen. It doesn't mean the enemy's not going to come. <laughs> it doesn't mean he's not going to put some thoughts your way. Right. But you have everything you need for life and godliness. Amen. Right? We resist the devil. We resist those thoughts. We draw near to God. And we submit to him. And the devil has to flee. So if you're, if you're not in a place right now where you feel like you can trust him, mm -hmm. then I would encourage you to grab the word and just hold on to it. Hold on to those promises and get into him because he has good things for you. If you are going through disappointment, mm -hmm. if your expectations haven't been met, if you're in a time of waiting like I am, just remember, it's all about relationships. That's right. It's all about relationship. And God wants to do more for you than you can ever even imagine. He wants your life to be a victorious life. He wants you to live victorious in Him. And when we do that, there's an overflow to the people around us. And the people around us change because we've changed because of the Word. Mm -hmm. And so I just encourage you to seek His kingdom, seek that relationship. Seek the Father who loves you so much. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen. Seek Him. And Jesus, He is your righteousness. You mm -hmm. are now the righteousness of God. But Jesus did all that work for you That's on right. the cross through the, the, His death and resurrection. It is yours. Amen. You are saved. You are healed. You are delivered. You are prosperous. This is your life. So, Build on that relationship with more and more revelation yes. of what he's done and who you are in him. Amen. And when we seek him from a place of abundance, a position of knowing who we are, Amen. then we can just stand in faith and continue on. Amen. Amen. What a powerful word. Amen. Can, can I pray for everybody? Oh, please do. Before I think questions. we would love for that. I would love to just pray for you. Amen. Father, we just thank you so much. And Lord, I know, I feel that there are people out there tonight who just need to know Lord. your great love for them, that they can trust you. Father, they need to know your promises. They need to hear those declarations and be able to say, yes, mm. that is who I am. Amen. And Lord, we just speak to their hearts right now. We just thank you that your love is so great, that you are their daddy. Amen. You're their father and their daddy with plans to prosper. You give them a future and a hope. You think good thoughts towards them. Amen. Lord, I thank you for how you're ministering to them right now. And Lord, people who might be in disappoint, disappointment, disappointed, offended, hurt, Father, just minister to them and just show them that they don't need to fix their eyes on that, but they can just fix their eyes on you and you will be the healer. You will be the one that brings restoration. Lord, we thank you for that. I just thank you for your word, and I thank you for how much you love us, and you will never leave us or forsake us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Man, what a powerful message, Cindy. Thank you for bringing the word tonight. Amen. Thank you. Man, if I can share, I loved your message about, man, hold on to the word that God has given you. Amen. And it's so powerful. I love the imagery that you gave of, you know, we were putting the stake in the ground and we're holding on to it. But sometimes we hold on to it so tight, we're missing out on that fun aspect that the Lord wants to walk with us through. Amen. And it reminds me, um, you know, in the scripture, it talks about the parable of the sower. And you know, in the parable of the sower, when it gets to the different types of ground, mm -hmm. one of the ground that it gets sowed upon is the rocky ground, mm -hmm. where the, immediately it springs forth, right? Mm -hmm. So we hear a word from the Lord, the seed is planted. Immediately we get excited and joyous over it. Yeah. But that part of the verse says, and then persecution comes for the word's sake. Yeah, that's right. right. That's and right. so when persecution comes for the word's sake in the scripture about the parable of the sower, it talks about how the seed that's sown in the rocky ground, because persecution came mm -hmm. for the word's sake, yep. that it was then up 
uprooted and it blew away with the wind. They let go of the word of God. They let go of that word God gave them because persecution came. Well, it must not be God. Well, this must have happened. And so I think so much more that understanding when persecution comes, it's rather a confirmation Amen. that you've heard the word of the Lord and hold on to that word, but enjoy the ride. Amen. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. That's yeah. very good. That's powerful. Man, well, I'm excited to jump into some questions. We've got some good questions from our audience today. Great. And so if you're Great. ready, we're going to dive into those. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to send in questions. Mm -hmm. Also want to let you know, if you haven't put in a question yet, you're not too late. Go ahead in the chat feature in which you're watching us on. Um, go down to that section and type in your questions. Send it to us. We're going to take time right now and dig into some of your questions. So, Miss Cindy, our first question comes from Denise on YouTube. And Denise says, blessings from Singapore. So she's watching us from Singapore. Hey, Denise. <laughs> she says, blessings from Singapore. Okay, so her question is, in the day to day, what does seeking God really look like mm. while patiently waiting for the promise to manifest? Amen, that's good. You know, Denise, I think that the most important thing um, in seeking God is building that relationship. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that relationship will come um, through the word, being in the word with him, getting a greater revelation of him. Sometimes the relationship comes through, um, you know, praying, praying in tongues, mm -hmm. um, just enjoying fellowshipping, um, thanking him in prayer. It also can come just through singing and worshiping. But, you know, sometimes I find the relationship just come through being maybe being outside, being in nature, just enjoying Him, I think, mm -hmm. puts our focus on Him. So when we're seeking, that word to me, seek, really just means focusing, right? Mm -hmm. Focusing. But I did look it up, and there's one place in the Bible where the word seek means sing. Isn't that cool? That is neat. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what it's doing is it's, it's talking about the heart. Mm -hmm. It's talking about your heart, just seeking Him, just focusing on Him, Amen spending time with him. And sometimes we can even just spend time with him as we're working, yeah. but our mind is still just focused on him. So don't get too um, intense or legalistic about, I got to seek him, but just focus on him and enjoy him. Amen. I think when we enjoy him, we see a greater aspect of who he is. Amen. Well, delight yourself in the Lord, That's right. right? And he will bring you the desires of your heart. Amen. So it's beautiful. Just enjoy him. Yeah. I love that. Awesome. So we have another question. Yes. Uh, this one comes from Sharon on YouTube. And so Sharon asked the question, what exactly does fixing your eyes on Jesus mean? Doesn't mean you're always thinking about him. How is that possible when there's so much going on in the day to day? What are the practicals of fixing your eyes on Jesus? That's good. I think a lot of times when we fix our eyes, yeah. um, it's, it's also the word that comes to me too is peace, right? So I have been in this situation, been in this weight, right? And I have so much peace. And it's the peace that tells me that I'm fixed on him. Mm -hmm. Because it says the peace of the Lord will rule. That rule word means umpire. It's like mm -hmm. the final authority. And so when I have peace, I know that I'm fixed on him because I'm not agitated. I'm not stirred up. If I was fixed on my circumstances or focused on my circumstances, I would be anxious, right? I probably would be um, exhausted because that's what fixing our eyes on circumstances does it. It makes us exhausted and tired and maybe crabby. And I would have all those things, but because there's such a peace in me, and I think even an excitement, then it shows me that my mind is fixed on him. Now, do I have a lot of things going on? Is my mind full all the time? <laughs> but sometimes it also means that I, do you ever get those times when you feel like the Lord is just saying, mm -hmm. come away? Oh, yes. And yeah. it doesn't have to be a half an hour. It doesn't have to be an hour. Just a moment. It's just a moment. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's just a, okay, let's put this here for a minute. I'm going to just pull back. That's All right, right, Lord, I'm just going to think about you, you know, or I'm going to think about the word that I read this morning or a verse that comes to mind or just how good you are. And so that's yeah. fixing our eyes. It, we just stay, you know, in that place of being willing to hear and pull away and focus and have peace. Amen. That's powerful. Yeah. 
So good. I love that that moment. All it takes is a moment to come away yep. with him. Yep. And then he just brings that peace. He brings that word of confirmation, right? Sometimes we just have to quiet ourselves. Just yes. be still and know that he is God. Exactly. Amen. That's exactly. Powerful. Well, we have another question. Um, so this one comes from a guest on chat. And the question is, how can I be confident to know I've heard the Lord? Mm, that's right. You know, the Bible says, mm. He says, my sheep hear my voice. Amen. And so God is always talking to us. Amen. And so we can be confident that we hear him because he's always talking, but because he says we hear his voice. So people get confused because they think it has to be this big booming thing. But you know, sometimes it's the word. If I, if I get something from the word, I'm hearing his voice yeah. because the word is his voice. Amen. Or sometimes I get a nudge. You know, or I get a, I get a, mm, I just think I should do this. That's God speaking to you. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't think you have to hear his words. Sometimes you do, you know, fix your eyes on me. I, I got it. You know, that I heard that. Now I could say, oh, Cindy, you're just thinking that way. But, but that's scriptural. I mean, that's what he wants me to do. So of course it's him talking to me. So I think we have to be co more confident mm -hmm. in who we are in him. Mm -hmm. that he's always talking to us and start to confirm when you get a nudge, when you get an inkling, when you, when the word comes back to you, when he reminds you of something, Amen. oh, thank you, Father, yes. that's you. And when we start acknowledging that it's him, we're going to hear it more and more and more. Amen. And I think that's what's really important. Just acknowledge, oh, thank you, God. Yes, Lord, thank you. I appreciate it. That's right. Amen. Because every one of us who know Jesus and have the Holy Spirit living in us, have the ability and opportunity mm -hmm. to hear his voice. Amen. And we recognize it because we know who he is. So that thought, yes, it could have been me, but it's a him thought. Mm -hmm. So it's him. Amen. And just give him credit. And you know, if you make a mistake, it's not really that big of a deal. Because if it lines up with scripture, it lines up with his nature, Amen. it lines up with who he is, then it can be him. It is Amen. him. Amen. So I would just say, you know, just be confident because you are his son, daughter. Just be confident that Amen. you can hear his voice and then walk in that confidence instead of doubting. Amen. That's so powerful. Walking in the confidence of knowing you're his. Yeah. That's powerful. You know, I had um, Ricky Burge was on one time and he was teaching and he said this and, and it was such a powerful thing he said, but he shared and he said, you've got to trust that he's the good shepherd. Amen. And he can lead you Amen. better than you can follow. Amen. And if we can trust, like you said, even if we think, well, I think this is the Lord, but I might be wrong, but I want to be in his perfect will. And we yeah. get so freaked out that I can't make the wrong move. We'll just move forward with it yep. and trust that you know what if you're a little bit off the Holy Spirit can guide you and put you right back on track. Amen. Amen. That's right. Man, it's just so That's powerful. Right. So, so I good. love that. And then I just want to encourage you, our audience, that we've got over 200,000 hours of amazing teaching That's on right. awmi.net. Yes. I want to encourage you to go there. Andrew's got some awesome teaching on how to hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And man, that'll give you some great guidance as well. So I have another question for you, Miss Cindy, and this one comes from Ava on YouTube. And Ava's asking, what do, we, what do we do when we feel like a blessing may have been lost or stolen from us? How do we prosper while yet still remaining humble and focused? Mm, that's good. So blessings come from the Lord. Amen. And you know, if God wants to bless you with something, even if you feel you've lost it, or maybe the enemy stole it or someone else has stole it, if it's a blessing from him, yeah. he's not gonna withhold it from you. Right. He does not withhold from you. So I would just go back and say, Lord, this blessing was from you and I feel like it's gone, but I trust you, you have good plans for me, I'm gonna praise you, I'm gonna thank you for it, and I'm just gonna continue to keep walking and get expectant. God wants us to be expectant Amen. because when we're expectant, we're, we're, we're watching, we're looking, we're waiting, and we might see other blessings that we would miss if we weren't expectant. Yeah. So I would just say, you know, get expectant, but stay in faith, you know, that long lasting patience, long lasting faith, stay in faith with him and just know that you have to trust that your good father is not going to withhold anything from you. So if he's trying to bless you or if he has blessed you, you're not going to miss it. 
if he's if you're looking for it, if you're expecting for it, it'll come. It may not come in your timing. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Lay the timing down and just keep walking with him. Don't keep focusing on the blessing. Focus on the blesser, Amen. which is God. And it will come to pass. Yeah. Amen. It will. I think that's the thing is it's, it's in scripture too. I love where it talks about how the, um, the, uh, those of old, they held on to the promise of faith. Yeah. Right. And so I think when we look at that in Hebrews 11 and it goes through, uh, the heroes of old and the, the faith aspect of what they held on believing for, yeah. I think it's that aspect that faith pleases God. Amen. And if we'll just stay faithful, say, God, I trust you. And if that means I trust you till the day I die, right? That's right. We just watch him be Amen. the one who comes Amen. through. It's Amen. So good. That's so good. Just hold on. Hold so on. we have another really good question. Her name is Sherry O on YouTube and Sherry O asked this question. She says, I'm facing the same situation right now and the same verses that God has also given me. Mm -hmm. She says, I'm waiting, but the waiting seems so long and torturous. You understand. Yeah. <laughs> and she says, so her question is, how do I still stand when I've done all to stand? And how do I stay strong and waiting for God's promise to come to pass? Wow, that's a good one, Sherry. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I can relate. I hear you and I understand. You know, what's the alternative to standing? Mm -hmm sitting? I mean, <laughs> what, falling, failing? You know, there's really not an alternative. So again, you know, Greg Moore teaches this a lot that it's, it's, we, we, we can't be looking at the clock. So good. We just trust God and we praise him through the whole thing. Amen. And as we wait, waiting doesn't mean you stop. That's right. Right? Waiting doesn't mean you stop. We are prepared for good works. Maybe there's another good work that's going to happen while you are waiting for this thing. So I think what we do is we just continue to move in the, the direction that God's called us to, to move into. And maybe he's going to bring other things alongside us. Maybe it's going to turn into something a little different. That's what's happening mm -hmm. with me. A little different than what I thought, right? I'm going to Singapore. I have the privilege and opportunity of getting to build relationship with our students in Singapore that I've never met. I get to spend time with them. I get to build up relationships and do things that I might not have had, had things gone a lot faster. So instead of me just looking for the one thing I thought was gonna happen, God's opened doors to mm -hmm. new things and new opportunities. And so I'm still waiting for that one thing and it will happen. But in the meantime, yeah. there's doors opening that I get to grab a hold of. So just remember that God has good things for you, good plans for you and staying in faith. We don't hold on so tight to this one thing, mm. but we just say timing is yours, God. What else do you have in the meantime? And then we just walk, just, just, be obedient. You know what? Just, just, just be, be obedient. obedient. We've said yes, God. Now we just are in obedient to stay in that yes mode. Amen. And it's just like you said earlier, right? It all is coming down to relationship with yeah, the Lord. Man, that's right. seek him first. Yes. Just be obedient and seek him first. Awesome. Well, I have time for one last okay. question before we close today. So my question comes from Samaya on YouTube. And Samaya asked the question, should we continue to wait and pray until things come to fruition? Or is the delay mean maybe I need to move on to another assignment? Hmm. Very good. That's a great question. You know, only the Lord can tell you mm. which way it is. But, but, you know, I think when we are in a time of waiting, a season of waiting, a season of, you know, not knowing, mm -hmm. again, we just go back to him Amen. and, and the Holy Spirit, God, did I miss something? Am I off a little bit? I'm sure you have pastors or leaders or mentors or people in your life who can pray with you and counsel with you and, you know, give you some insight and direction. The Holy Spirit can speak through them as well. Those are good things to do. Um, just because we're waiting, you know, wait on the Lord, just because we're waiting doesn't mean we're wrong. Mm -hmm. That's good. Sometimes it's the timing that's not right. Yep. But again, then there's other things mm -hmm. during that time. So, you know, if you're waiting and you're just not sure, well, go out and help somebody. Go out and serve somebody. Amen. Go pray for people. You know, get out there and share the gospel. Do the work of the ministry still Amen. as you're waiting because God is faithful. Right. The word says he is always 
faithful. He will complete what he started. If mm -hmm. he's told us something, Amen. it's going to come to fruition. He's going to do it. Amen. So in the waiting, don't just sit back and dwell, but in the waiting, go do something. Amen. Right? Go, go pursue his will to bring people to the Lord, right? Amen. Share the gospel with others, the Great Commission. Amen. Um, heal the sick. <laughs> And I That's believe it. you're going to get really blessed by that. Amen. I love it. You know, Jesus said, occupy the land until I come. Amen. Amen. So this is what we get to do. We don't sit on our hands in the waiting. We get active in the waiting. Yes. Even if that means we're growing in our relationship with the yep. Lord, we're learning more of who we are in Christ. Absolutely. We're removing the blinders of the lies of the enemy or wrong thinking and just yep. being renewed to the word of God. You know, put your hand to the plow. Amen. Amen. So good. Awesome. Well, Wonderful. Cindy, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. What a beautiful thank you message. Thank you for letting me be here. Oh, of course. I would love to have you anytime. Well, we want to thank you so much, our audience, for joining us today. And thank you for your questions. They were powerful. I want to let you know if your question didn't get answered on Tuesday afternoons, Barry Bennett does a questions roundup where he takes time to go through the questions that we weren't able to get to and answers those. So I encourage you to check those out. Make sure you join us tomorrow, Friday morning, 10 a.m. Mountain Time for our next live Bible study. But we thank you so much for joining us and you have a blessed evening. Bye everyone. Amen. Bye-bye. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV.